Detention is that way. In the library. Get ready for the worst day of your lives. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 mistakes left in sitcoms. What can we do to make them collaborate? You can eliminate their you know what. <laughs> That was a joke. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable goofs, plot holes, and funny unplanned instances that made it into situational comedies. Which of these mistakes do you think was the most egregious? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. A Magic Teddy Bear – That 70s Show We understand that whenever Ashton Kutcher was on screen, the odds are you weren't looking at his feet. And I got you a present. <laughs> However, if you had been during one particular scene in the inaugural season, you might have noticed the curious case of the disappearing teddy bear. As you can see, when Kelso walks into Jackie's room, the stuffed animal is on the ground at his feet. Jackie, please. I really need to talk to you. I want to apologize. But the next time we see his shoes, there's no bear. But wait, cut back to a wide shot and there it is again. I realized that just because you look bad now, that doesn't mean you're gonna look bad forever. <laughs> I mean, I just saw your mom downstairs, and even though she's pretty old, she's really hot. Kelso only has taken a few minuscule steps, and yet the toy has come and gone and come back again. Now that's a magic teddy bear. Number nine, TV in the bedroom, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. There are those that believe in having a television in the bedroom and those that are against the idea. Then there are those, like Holt on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, who have won there but want people to think they don't. I thought I had done enough recon, but clearly I've only scratched the surface. If I'm gonna bond with him, I have to massively violate his privacy. Or at least, that's the only explanation we can come up with for this plot hole. In season two, the character states that he doesn't have a TV in his bedroom. I know they say it's not good to have a TV in the bedroom, which is why I don't. And given his personality, this doesn't initially seem unlikely. Yet in the first season, we all saw Amy go into his room secretly to see what was on his DVR. I need DVR. Tell me the captain's secrets. Unveil yourself to me. Ooh, how it's made. Contact lenses. Bingo! Number eight. Tories detention, victorious. No one wants their children to get a detention at school. You're just gonna let me get away with it. You took detention and a lower grade and you're scraping crusty pudding off the wall on a Friday night just so I won't get in trouble. But if The Breakfast Club taught us anything, it's that it can happen to anyone. From the delinquent to the brainiac to the popular kid. You know, the doors are supposed to stay open. So why? So why don't you just shut up? There's four other people in here, you know? God, you can count. See, I knew you had to be smart to be a, a wrestler. Who the hell are you to judge anybody anyway? Really? So, the fact that Tori got detention in the first season of Victorious isn't necessarily that big of a deal. Wait, aren't you gonna punish her? Derek! Don't hit him! I wasn't gonna! Can you just tell me my punishment? Two weeks of detention. Oh. However, lying is. So we have to admit, we were a little disappointed in her in the season 3 Ode to the Breakfast Club when she said she's never had a detention before. This is a great way to spend a Saturday. I have never had detention before. I'm kind of nervous. If you hadn't made us late for class, we wouldn't be here. I was choking on a pretzel! Remember kids, honesty is the best policy. Number 7. Fog Machine – How I Met Your Mother All of it was leading somewhere, because suddenly, it was 2006, and 2006 was a big one. Most of us are probably aware of the fact that the weather in TV and movies is often man-made. Snow machines, rainmakers, and big wind fans are often used to create the proper conditions for a particular scene. Stop trying to chase down some magical perfect New Year's, Ted. It doesn't exist. However, just because we know this doesn't mean we want to see that weather maker in the shot. But that's what we had to witness during the How I Met Your Mother episode, the limo. Marshall! As Marshall dramatically emerges from the fog and runs towards the title vehicle, the machine responsible for that fog is sitting there on the ground. Number 6. 
Dorothy's long pregnancy. The Golden Girls. Mom, don't you think it would be a little awkward with you and Dad not talking? Oh, no, just a minute. I'm not the one who ran off to Maui with someone half my age and twice my bra size. Character ages on television shows can get a little confusing, so a little leeway might be appropriate at times. Well, maybe that's why he left, because you forced him into it. Rose, he left me 38 years later for a stewardess that he met on a business trip to Hawaii. But you'd have to give more than a little leeway to the Golden Girls when it comes to the age of Dorothy's kid. In the first episode, Dorothy explains to Rose that Stan got her pregnant and that her father made them get married. My father told Stan that he had to marry me. I was pregnant. You had a blowgun wedding? Then, 38 years later, he left her. It sounds like her child has to be about 38 years old, right? Well, we met her two children, Michael and Kate, individually throughout the series, and they inexplicably both look like they're in their 20s. Where do you go to school, Michael? Well, college isn't really my style. I attend the School of Life. Really? A lot of people go there when they can't get accepted anywhere else. <laughs> Cute. Number 5. Disappearing Nail Polish – New Girl it's the nail polish the nail polish remover industry doesn't want you to know about. Wear it whenever you want, and when you decide you're tired of it, it just disappears cleanly from your nails. I'm Thank right you now. for breakfast! I'm gonna shove this bacon right in my mouth and savor it that for life. That omelet was so delicious! You, know what, you guys are saying really nice things to me, but you're both shouting Such a now. delicious omelet! The presentation's fantastic! Obviously, such a product doesn't exist, but in a scene during a season 4 episode of New Girl, Jess appears to be wearing, and then quickly, not wearing such a polish. Nick's not gonna let Schmidt boss him around and vice versa. Don't get me started on the male power dynamic. I will talk your ear off. They're being such dudes right now. It's mm. like all about who's got the bigger you-know-what. Her nails go from colorful to blank in an instant. Though if someone did invent it, we bet shark Laurie Grenier would be very interested in investing in it, as opposed to Schmidt and Nick's sweet. Don't settle for substitutes, swaddle for swamps to swoots. No? I've got to stop drinking on the golf course. Number 4. A Visible Crew Member – Malcolm in the Middle In the second episode of Malcolm in the Middle, Lois's pricey red dress gets set on fire and left in the toilet. Mom! No! Fire? 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 Given her kid's track record, she assumes one of them did it and decides to confront them with a burned and wet garment. Where we have to identify your charred little bodies through their dental records? I want a straight answer. Who did this? Malcolm did it. Reese did it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. We're going to the dentist. But right as she starts walking toward them, you can see a guy crouching in the hallway holding a bucket next to her. Whether he handed her the dress or was there to minimize the water spillage, it's still a flub that's hard to miss. We generally don't like to tattle, but while we're on the subject of ruined clothes, Hal did it. Oh, no, no. Okay, okay. Oh, jeez, oh, not again. Number three, Penny's dad's name, The Big Bang Theory. What is Penny's dad's name on The Big Bang Theory? Well, it's Wyatt, of course. That's what Leonard calls him in the episode where they meet for the first time. I think this ends the ex-boyfriend portion of our evening. Well, I'm just glad you finally found yourself a keeper. Oh, thanks, Wyatt. I'm a keeper. It's also the name that's used throughout the show, except for that one time. You see, in season two, when mentioning her father's name, Penny actually calls him Bob. I mean, my mom could have just said, Bob, get over it, she's a girl, move on. <laughs> Interesting. We guess the writers just decided that they didn't like that moniker and decided to switch things up, hoping we'd all forget. Or maybe they forgot they'd already given him a name when it came time to introduce him to Leonard later on. Behind every great man is a nagging woman who won't let him have any fun, am I right, Leonard? <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> well, good night, son. Good night, Wyatt. Number two, the car not starting, Seinfeld. There are instances when goofs or unintentional situations actually improve the material and are added in. Apparently, Seinfeld had at least two such moments. Remember when Newman sleeps with the farmer's daughter and has to run out of the house? As he flees, she calls after him, referring to him as Norman. I told you to give away my daughter! <laughs> Don't
This was a slip of the tongue by the actress, but everyone thought it was humorous, so they left it in. But the most unbelievable example occurred at the end of the parking garage. What time's that place start? Eight o'clock. <laughs> That could be a problem. It's a perfect ending to the episode, all about the lengthy search for their car. But the vehicle malfunctioning wasn't planned. It actually just didn't start, and they realized that was the way to go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Two Phoebes. Friends. Paul, this is… everybody. <laughs> everybody, this is Paul. Hey, hey Paul. Guy. Paul. Paul. Guy. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Paul, was it? Did you know that Friends was originally supposed to be part sitcom, part science fiction? We're joking. But the pilot episode does have a scene where Phoebe seemingly teleports. Oh, I just pulled out four eyelashes. That can't be good. <laughs> you don't remember that one? Well, here she is standing with Rachel in the kitchen, talking about her pulled out eyelashes. Then, as Paul the wine guy who's sitting on the couch turns to look at her, who do we see on the chair behind him? There's Phoebe in the same clothes, in the same mug in her hands. It's a pretty unbelievable mistake for a show to make. So, Rachel, what are you, uh, what are you up to tonight? Well, I was kind of supposed to be headed for Aruba on my honeymoon, so nothing. How did no one notice that the person Paul is supposedly trying to react to was now sitting behind him? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.